Now, we can increase the value of the field. Let's increase it in order of magnitude. So the vector potential now is slightly greater. Let's resolve the problem. And even more flux is penetrating the superconducting disk. So this is another simulation here for a type 2 superconductor inside a magnetic field that shows penetration into the superconductor. Uh, in case A, we have the magnetic field is 0 0.07 Tesla. In B, it's 0 0.2 Tesla. And C, it's uh, 0 0.7 Tesla. And there's still some deviation of the field here, so uh, we will still be in a vortex state and not quite in the normal state until we reach HC2 for a type 2 superconductor. The next thing I want to look at is a coupled stress problem. First, we'll look at the superconducting uh, levitation. Then we'll look at the, the stress distribution in the ring. So we want to illustrate superconducting levitation. This is my model file, which is quite large. Uh, it's over 200,000 nodes. Notice it's not necessary to have this, this many nodes to illustrate levitation. This is my air region. Now, my magnet and my superconducting disk are uh, very small on the scale, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. So this is the superconducting disk which I'm modeling with a very small permeability. This is the magnet, which has a course of force of 28,000, very close to cobalt rare earth magnet. And of course, this is the air region. Now, on the top and the sides of my cylindrical solution region. I've assigned zero vector potential. I'm not interested in, in the, the field value at these regions, which is why I've pushed them so far out. All we're interested in is the flux distribution near the superconducting magnet above the disk here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and solve that or refresh the solution. which took 16 seconds on my computer. Now, we want to zoom in here so we can see what's going on. And we have the, the, the magnet above the superconducting disk, so the, the disk is expelling the field lines here. And there will be a force between the magnet and the disk, and we would like to calculate that force. Later, we'll calculate the stress distribution. So I can make a contour around the superconducting disk, and I can look at integral values, in which case I want the mechanical force, which is about 0.22 newtons. Now, the force that this is the force that the super that the magnet is exerting on the superconducting disk, and from Newton's third law, the force that the disk exerts back on the magnet should be equal and opposite, which we can verify our solution accuracy. 
So I'll clear this contour. I'm going to create another contour around the superconducting magnet. So we go around here. And we can check the mechanical force. Once again, 0.22, this time 9.57 newtons. Now, the reason that I had pushed the boundaries so far out is because there will be some variation in the force acting on the magnet and the disk because of, this, of the, the boundary. So we want to get the boundary as far out as possible. I can illustrate the effects of the boundary by bringing it in slightly. If I go back to the model, let me fit, make this full screen here. You can see this boundary is very far out here. I'm going to bring it in considerably. And I'm going to bring this in. OK. I'll remesh it. Smaller problem. Now, I'm going to resolve it. And let's compare the force once again. So I'll make a contour first around the superconducting disk, and I'll look at integral values of mechanical force about 0.22 newtons. So that hasn't changed. The force on the disk is still about the same. Now let's look at the force on the magnet. Well, we have about 0.228, so still pretty similar. Now, if you give some permeability to the magnet, you'll find that this is changes considerably as well. So what I want to do is translate the magnet along the z-axis here, and we can look at the force as we vary the position of the magnet along the z-axis. So I'm going to go to my parametric analysis with label mover. Once again, we're in serial analysis. We need to choose the base problem that corresponds to the one that we're solving here, which is levitation RZ. We need to add values. In this case, I'm interested in mechanical force detecting on the magnet. Now we'll record steps. I'm going to displace the magnet to the left in increments of one centimeter. Let's add a step. And I'm going to repeat the last step. 